Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And of course, I'm going to talk XRP on demand liquidity. And I'm going to highlight a Ripple partner that is using the digital asset XRP for on demand liquidity. And the reason why I focus on ODL so much is because as an XRP holder, I want to see how this is really being used so that there can be a significant impact on the supply. And this particular partner is successfully lighting up new corridors and is doing it with the likes of, for example, Thai Kasi Corn Bank, which was announced in May. They are going to ramp up their digital cross-border payments to Indonesia, Korea, Malaysia, Philippines, Vietnam, just to name a few, expanding to 12 different currencies and 30 countries by the end of the year. The partner I am talking about is Neom. Let me show you how that flywheel in motion can happen with just one Ripple partner who's using ODL. SBI Ven Capital. This is an entity owned by Mr. Kitao of SBI Holdings. It's an equity firm to grow businesses. It's located in Singapore. And you can see in this portfolio, there are a few banks, including TP Bank in Vietnam that is running on Ripple since November. And then here you can see Neom. Don't forget, Neom is using on-demand liquidity. They are a Ripple client and very, interesting in terms of what they are scaling up to do. Here, you can see that as a leading digital cross-border payments company, they leverage those very liquid corridors, the two, the Philippines and Mexico. And according to the founder of Neom, we've been able to eliminate pre-funding requirements and offer faster remittances at a lower cost. So for cross-border remittances, this is exactly what XRP does, and it does it quite well. Despite what anyone might tell you, if the corridor is liquid, XRP works beautifully. And here, the founder of Neom, his name is Prajit Nanu, he's talking to Ashish Birla. This is in April 2019, and with Ripple, Neom can minimize or eliminate the capital investment with pre-funded accounts. This is a great article. It links to a statement in this page that I will put and takes you to this video here. I understand that some of you watching are new to XRP and this link will allow you to watch a video on how XRP becomes the on-demand liquidity pool. It's very good, and so it'll be there in case you wanna access that. Now, it's also important to know, if you wanna follow the money, that Neom was called Instarem. And they went through a rebranding last year with the vision to make the RippleNet technology available to many clients, creating a global payments universe. It's kind of interesting to know that Neom is uh, something that comes from Sanskrit, and it's a word that means rules or principles. So this new brand, Neom, is what has gone forward in his new scaled up version of a company. If I take you back to 2017, SBI, who owns that fund in Singapore invested in Instagram way before they were a Ripple partner. Mr. Kital provided 13 million in funding. Now, when people tell you that SBI isn't doing anything, they're not following the money. This is 2017. And when you see what he's doing now in 2020, that statement doesn't hold any water. So Instagram didn't partner with Ripple until February 2018. And when that partnership was announced, it would be for RippleNet to provide these payments, these payouts all through Southeast Asia. 
And they would also offer them to the SMEs, the small to medium sized enterprises in that region for real time settlement. Since that RippleNet partnership and capital came from SBI, Neom has really scaled up. Now they are meeting the needs of other payment service providers, FIs, and banks. They have two products. One where you can use your own license and then they'll provide you really fast integration with the API. Or if you don't have a license, you're a startup and you don't want to really wait the six months to two years that it takes to get a license, if you successfully get that license, you can use their rails and their license. That's why this is so interesting. Now here is the example I want to show of that flywheel in motion. This is an FX broker and it's called Frenta Corretora. They're in Brazil and they have the vision, dream, desire, burning, burning desire to be the transfer wise of Brazil. And they wanna do it with cross-border remittances via blockchain, okay? So in steps Neom and Neom is going to power their cross-border payments, okay? And as part of the new collaboration, Neom will begin offering Fuente Corretora clients the ability to send to the U.S. to start and then later to Canada and later to Japan. This will use the cross-border digital money transfer platform that Neom makes available to them. So I don't think they have their license. I think they're going to run on Neom's rails. This is this is me talking. I think they are going to run on the rails of Neom and do it under the license that Neom holds. Because let me show you, um, Frente will use the Ripple technology for sure, and it's going to power this company called Simple. And it will be a white label platform for the foreign exchange brokers, partners to use. So do you see, we've got Neom, who's going to power the platform simple, which is a white label platform, which means that anybody can use it and customize it for their own use. Well, it really did launch. And it's called, as a final product name, it's called Simple MEI. And it is a complete package made on demand. So who's going to use it? Well, according to Fuente, it's, the scope is unlimited. Agents, hospitality, insurance brokers, any autonomous business in a global environment. So remember, Neom to Fuente to what they say in this article, they want to expand to a thousand SMEs at the end of the year in Brazil. Wow. So we all know that on-demand liquidity with XRP is coming to Brazil very soon. This is what the simple MEI website looks like. It says your digital exchange fintech ready in one week. So that ODL that's coming very soon to Brazil. I know that it ha really has my attention. And you can see here that it was announced in February 2020 that Neom partnered with the Topazio Bank. The purpose of this partnership? The bank wants to allow its customers to make international outbound payments simply and in a cost-effective manner. In fact, we also know that from XRP Arcade that they found a test page on Topazio's website. And it was a kind of Ripple sign-in page. Here it is here, where you can put in an email address and password. It showed up shortly after Swell in the early part of this year. Hmm. Now, on May 5th, 
Visa made an investment and they did it with the corporate venture arm of the bank BRI. They put in what was to be believed by the fintech, uh, future, future fintech, yeah, 75 to 100 million dollars. And this is going to give Neom a serious amount of capital. They are preparing for an IPO. The IPO is slated to be in 2021. So when I go to a very recent podcast, which occurred on June 9th, Yogesh Sangal, who was previously with MoneyGram and is now the global head of consumer business at Neom, he was on this podcast and he was asked, why did Visa invest? And I will just recap before I play it for you, because I know sometimes these accents are hard to understand. But they said, he said, that Neom is basically a technology company at the core level. And that we built our stack in such a way with flexibility and nimbleness for those corridors that, you know, as you get big, this is one of the features that you might tend to lose. Also, other players in the market like Ripple and MasterCard, they will take us to their partners. And that gets things implemented very fast. So you can see that the strategic partnership they have with Ripple is very, very key. And Visa believes it's quite important. Okay, have a listen to this portion here. An organization like Visa is a billion dollar corporation. Why would a company like that invest in Neom? I think we've been talking to Visa for a long time and I think they had certain level of interest in what we were trying to achieve. What we are at a core level are a technology company. Being a technology company, we built our stacks in such a way that flexibility and nimbleness are really core to us. As you become big and you know, work for bigger companies, that is one feature that you tend to lose as you move forward. So I think a strategic investment by Visa or BRI Ventures, we also have K-Bank, which is one of the largest banks in Thailand investing into us. They have invested into us because we bring that nimbleness. Their stack is already done. It is solid. It is really good. It works all the time. We build on top of those stacks. So that's something that they're helping us. Not only them, but other players in the market, like say a Ripple or a MasterCard, they would use us and take us to their partners just for that because we can get things implemented very fast. Yeah. There you go. I think that's maybe there's a little more here. What are you seeing are the biggest challenges right now in the payment space? I think. Oh, that was it. That was it. Yeah. So there you have it. Um, Visa, you know, really sees that uh, Neom is going to be taken to the Ripple partners and they can implement things very fast. And because they are a young, growing company, uh, it's very, very attractive. All right, everybody, you can see that flywheel, right? I mean, just one customer who's going to use Neom is going to ramp up to a thousand customers with their white label site. So this is this really gets exciting. And what better person to be moving this technology into the space who is already successfully using ODL? So it's just a matter of getting these corridors liquid, really. Okay, everybody, let's take a look at the fluff. So I know that this might be a hard picture for some people to see because it's got some fish eyes <laughs> looking at you, but this is considered one of the art forms in Japan, and that is to display sashimi. And the sashimi is uh, very often put on a plate in this manner, but there is somebody who is posting on Twitter some absolutely amazing displays of sashimi. This happens to be a fancy goldfish made of squid. And this one I thought was great. It's a combination of 
two different fish. I'm not sure. I mean, I think for sure it's, well, I'm not sure. I don't want to make a guess, but it is two different kinds of fish. I'm just not exactly positive what it is. I could make a guess, but I, I might be wrong. This one I do know. I love it. It's made of octopus. <laughs> Look at that. Just so creative. And I had to show you one more of the octopus, which I think are, are my favorite. Anyway, a very nice selection. Very, very creative. I'll put the um, Twitter handle down in the description below if you want to look at more. All right, everybody, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.